Chapter 8. The Beating Heart of Your Business, Your Menu There are many important components of your food truck business, but none are more important than your menu. Customers are ultimately going to judge you on how tasty your menu is. Your menu determines how successful you'll be, and also what level of service you can provide for your customers. A well-designed menu will leave customers hungry for more, and reduces the burden on your shoulders. A poorly designed menu will torpedo your business before it even gets off the ground. First-time food truck owners are likely to get ahead of themselves when designing their menus. In the rush of starting a new venture, they'll likely go out and buy the most expensive ingredients, which will increase their costs. As a result, they'll price themselves out of the market. You can't compete against fine dining restaurants from a food truck. So, don't think you need to have the finest ingredients. This doesn't mean your ingredients need to be bad. You need to draw the line somewhere and balance your desires with practicality. Cheaper cuts of meat and cheaper vegetables can be just as delicious as the more expensive ones. You need to get creative with how you cook them. Keeping the purpose of a food truck in mind, make sure your menu has a quick turnaround time. General Tips Quick turnaround times are crucial for your food truck, since customers won't hang around forever. They're likely to queue outside a restaurant that serves great food, but this isn't the case with a food truck. There are so many other options customers have that it doesn't make sense for them to do so. If you're targeting the lunchtime office crowd, no one is going to stand around for more than 10 minutes to get their food. Brainstorm dishes that can be prepared in advance and need to be put together, or food that cooks quickly. If your dishes have rice in them, this is something you can prepare well in advance. Sticking with the Mexican food example, as I have throughout this book, you would only need to dish. Other cuisines lend themselves to such organization as well. For example, if you're serving Indian food, you can pre-cook all curries and rice beforehand and simply serve them hot when ordered. If you're serving burgers, you can cook them beforehand and keep them warm until customers order them. This is what fast food restaurants do. You'll be using better quality meat, so don't worry about coming across as a fast food joint. Another excellent way to reduce your expenses is to create a menu that uses a common set of ingredients. Not every dish on your menu needs to have the exact same ingredients, but limit them to a small number. This makes shopping for ingredients a lot easier. By buying larger quantities of ingredients, you can buy them in bulk, and this decreases your costs. It also reduces the chances of food going to waste, since your ingredients will be used in every dish. The number of items on your menu is also a key factor. Most food trucks have between 6 and 12 items, Hints for building your food truck menu 2020. Remember that quality is better than quantity. Your customers aren't expecting a restaurant, so don't think you need to give them all kinds of food. Stick to the ones you can cook well and what they'll love. Besides, remember my earlier point about changing menus with the seasons? This gives you a chance to refresh your menu and you won't be stuck cooking the same things all year. Your prices are affected by your costs. If you follow the previous tips, you'll automatically be able to set good prices that deliver value to your customers. Remember that you're running a business. Customers will always go to whichever place gives them the highest value. Your food might taste great, but there's a maximum price someone will be willing to pay for it. So don't let your ego set prices. Follow the tips in this chapter to set realistic prices and always keep your costs as low as you possibly can. Menu Themes and Space Considerations When picking the cuisine for your food truck, it can be hard to decide which one to pick. I've already mentioned how you need to go about narrowing down your options. If there are a large number of trucks serving your style of food, you can either niche down or change the type of cuisine you want to serve. Decide on the theme of your menu and start narrowing it down from there. 
Every food truck has certain items that are pillars. They're the items that will be ordered most and will convey everything that your food truck has to offer. They need to be closely tied to the theme of your cuisine. They also need to be easy to cook and shouldn't require your customers to wait in long lines. This is quite a tall order. You could cook the item beforehand and store it in warm containers prior to serving, but make sure the texture and flavor of the food is preserved. Be realistic about how many items can be on your menu. You'll be working with a small staff, usually just two people, including yourself, and you'll be working in a smaller space. No matter how large your commercial kitchen space is, you're going to be serving food out of your truck. You'll still need to deliver great taste to your customers. It's a tough task, so make sure you take the time to really think deeply about your menu. The smaller your menu is, the higher its quality will be. However, you don't want to go too small since this will turn customers away. If this is your first time running a business, keep it below 10 items for your own sake. Once you've landed on a few items, it's time to test it out. Have your staff and family taste your dishes and time how long it takes you to serve them. Try to cook the dishes 30 seconds faster and see if this is possible. In a real-world environment, you'll have less time and more stress. This is why the 30-second test is a good one to implement. It trains you to move faster so when the real thing comes, you'll be up for it. Gather feedback from everyone who tastes your menu and incorporate it. If your food isn't up to it, take it to the chin and redesign your menu. Don't stick to your old menu stubbornly. Incorporating feedback into your decisions is the key to succeeding in business. You need to be innovative and turn a profit. You'll likely have to go through a few iterations of your menu before you land the perfect combination. Streamline your options as much as possible. If you're serving grains, limit them to two options. If you're serving wraps, limit the number of items your customers can add. You need to strike a balance between streamlining and offering no options at all, so be careful of this. Seek feedback from the people around you and incorporate it into your future designs. Once you've landed on a winning combination, it's time to price your food. Setting Prices Prices are a crucial component to your business. They determine your profit percentage and convey the degree of value you're giving your customers. You want your prices to generate a good amount of profit for yourself and leave you enough of a buffer to at least break even if things go wrong. As I mentioned earlier in this book, the usual approach is to multiply the unit cost of an item by three to arrive at the selling price. Demand also plays a role. If your truck becomes well known for a certain dish, you can charge more for it. If you've noticed that a certain item is high in demand at a particular time of the day, or due to the venue you're in, you can raise prices. Obviously, you don't want to extort your customers. Be sensible with your price increases. A food cost percentage model is also used by restaurants. Typically, the cost price of the food is anywhere between 20 and 40% of the sale price. If a menu item costs $2 to prepare, its sale price can be between $5 to $10. The three times multiplication lands in the middle of this range. You want to increase or decrease your prices depending on how much time it takes you to prepare an item. This method places a premium on your gross margins. Remember them? Your gross margin is calculated as follows. Step 1. Sales price, $5, minus cost price, $1, equals $4. Step 2. Divide the result of step 1 by sale price. 4 divided by 5 equals 0 0.8, which equals 80%. You want your gross margins to be as high as possible, since this gives you more room to account for operating expenses. However, you can push prices only so high before customers rebel. You can find that after accounting for sensible customer prices, your gross margins will land around 40-80%. to 80%. If your gross margins are less than this, 
you need to have low operating expenses. An ice cream vending truck will have low operating expenses, since there isn't much prep work that needs to be done other than making large batches and storing products. A truck that cooks fresh food will have higher operating expenses, since inventory turnover will be faster. You can target food costs to be a certain percentage of your menu price. Let's say you want food costs to be 30% of your menu price, which means your gross margin is 70%, and an item costs you $2 to make. Its sale price is calculated as menu price minus cost price divided by cost percentage equals 2 divided by 0 0.3 equals $6.66. Another way of approaching the question of menu pricing is to target a gross margin and see what prices you end up with. Let's say a menu item costs you $2 to prepare and you want to earn 50% gross margins on this item. The sale price can be calculated as gross margin amount desired equals cost price divided by gross margin percent equals 2 divided by 0 0.5 equals $4. Menu price equals cost price plus gross margin price equals 4 plus 2 equals $6. You'll need to check whether this item can reasonably sell for $6 per portion. If it's a plate of fries, no one's going to pay this much for them. If it's a burger, it's a steal. Food cost percentages and gross margins are two sides of the same coin. They add together to give you your final menu price. Play around with them to land at a price that makes sense for your customers and allows you to earn a good profit. Closely related to this method is the factor pricing method. Here, you divide 100 by your food cost percentage and multiply this number by how much the food cost you. For example, if your desired food cost percentage is 30%, dividing this by 100 gives us 3.33. 100 divided by 30. Multiply this by the cost of the item. Let's assume this is $2, and you arrive at a menu price of $6.66. Notice that shortcut method that I mentioned earlier, multiply costs by 3, assumes a food cost percentage of around 30% and a gross margin of 70%. To simplify calculations, simply multiply by 3 or 3.5 to arrive at a sensible menu price. If you can push it to a multiple of 4, this is even better. Just don't sacrifice quality in the interests of profits. A pitfall of using the shortcut is that it doesn't discriminate between low-cost and high-cost items. There are some items that will cost a lot, and you won't have as high a gross margin on them. You can structure your menu in such a way that it has a mixture of high gross margin items and low ones. Given the way the industry works, you'll find that your primary menu items will be the medium to low gross margin items. Accessory foods such as sides, drinks, and simple desserts are high margin items. To get an idea of how you can structure your menu, take a look at how fast food chains push products to their customers. They push combo meals because fries and coke are high margin items. Restaurants can take a hit on the lower unit sale price of these items and still earn greater margins than the burger itself. Sides that can be turned into a primary menu item are a gold mine. For example, loaded fries, loaded potatoes, and so on have low costs and high gross margins. To load them, you need to add just a few additional items, and you have a massive earner. See if you can create little value additions to your sides to create main courses that can make you more money. Menu Design Design in this case refers to the physical design of your menu. You can have the most delicious food there, but if a customer doesn't like it the way it looks, the taste of your food won't matter. Think of your menu as being an extension of the way your food looks. Would you eat anything on a plate that doesn't look fresh and delicious? Don't expect your customers to either. Here are some tips that will help you design a great menu board that will keep customers coming back for more. Push your star items. 
Our eyes are usually drawn to the upper right-hand corner of a board or its center. Place your best dishes here. You can place your hero items in the center and highlight your highest margin products in the top right-hand corner. Get the visuals right. We're visual creatures, so it's important that the images associated with your food look great. Take pictures that make your food look great as much as possible. Draw inspiration from how fast food chains photograph their food. Have you noticed a Big Mac on the menu board versus how it comes in a box? That's the standard you want to aim for. If you can afford one, hire a professional photographer. If not, don't worry. Take photos with lots of light in them and edit the pictures using filters and other online software apps. These allow you to play around with the hues in your food to make it look more attractive. Don't go overboard with the edits, since you want your photo to resemble the real thing. Proofread Always proofread your menu. The last thing you want to do is misspell the names of your food items. There's nothing more unappetizing than that. It also makes you look like an amateur. There are some clever food trucks that take advantage of misspellings to create humor and draw customers in. These are fairly advanced marketing strategies. To break the rules, you need to earn what they are first. Avoid experimenting at first and only start playing around with them once you're comfortable with how your customers think. Descriptions, not war and peace. You love creating your food, so it's natural you'll want to describe it in great detail. Remember that your objective is to inform customers of what's in the dish. You're not writing a novel. If you're cooking ethnic food, remember the advice about restaurant names. You want some local flavor in the description, but put too much of it and no one will understand what they're ordering. Keep it simple and let your food do the talking. Fonts and Colors be consistent with your fonts and colors. They need to tie in with your branding. You will be tempted to run away with your fonts and use all kinds of them, but this will make you look unprofessional. Keep your font selection consistent across your website and your truck. Take a look at other websites and businesses that project the same marketing tone as you do. Look at their font selection and choose accordingly. If you want to project a classy vibe, look at the website of Louis Vuitton and use their fonts. Don't use more than two fonts across your branding. You can search for fonts that complement one another and use those pairs. Seek feedback. Always have someone providing you with feedback. They can be your loved ones or your customers. If you have followers on social media, Post your menu on your channels and ask them for feedback. Don't shy away from negative feedback. They're a means for you to get better. Use numbers. You can use your food items in as friendly a manner as possible. But if you're serving ethnic food, it's not always possible to make the item's name friendly to local speakers. Use numbers to identify meals and encourage your customers to use them. This will avoid them being embarrassed to order an item. Label Dishes If you're offering special dishes that are vegan, heart-healthy, or anything else you can think of, make sure you label them. If you are serving ethnic food, indicate which menu items are spicy. Gluten-free, allergen information, and cooking methods are some of the other special methods that you'll need to clearly label. Tricks that enhance your menu. You can get as creative as you want with your menu. The challenge is to know when to stop. Overdo it and you'll draw attention away from the quality of your food. The idea with these tricks isn't to manipulate your customers. Instead, approach it with the intention of driving interest towards your food. You produce great food and your customers will enjoy eating it. So why not use certain psychological methods to help them make a good choice? Avoid dollar signs. You might be dreaming of dollar signs all day long, but you don't want to show them to your customers. Menus that list dollar signs draw a customer's focus away from the food and onto the price. 
You want them to focus on the menu item and its description, not have them thinking about the price. List the number as the price and don't use any currency signs. End prices differently. Visit a fast food chain and you'll notice that all prices end in 99. This is the hallmark of cheap stores. Everyone knows stores do this to make items look cheaper than they actually are. You want to use this principle, but don't copy the 99 format. This will make you look cheap, and customers will associate you with dollar discount menus. Instead, end your prices with 95. It still makes your prices look cheaper than they really are, and you'll avoid the bargain bin perception of your food. Avoid columns. What is the first thing you do when you see columns? Your eyes automatically start comparing features between all of them. This is why online service companies list their features in columns. It's easier to compare prices this way. That's not what you want with your menu. Listing your three best dishes as columns will lead to customers ordering the one that's priced the lowest. Unless that's a deliberate ploy of yours, you want to avoid columns. Use lists instead and let your description sell the item. Bracket your food. An exception to column usage is when you bracket your food. Bracketing is when you offer different sized portions of the same meal for different prices. It's a strategy that big food chains use all the time. You'll see the small size listed for $5, the medium for $7, and the large for $8. The portion sizes will be visually represented in columns, and the large will look three times the size of the small, but it's less than twice the cost. Customers will naturally opt for the large since they'll consider the medium overpriced. You can use the same with just two sizes as well. Offer a small and large to your customers. The offer by itself will have them wondering whether the small will be enough to satisfy them. They'll order the large to avoid that risk. If the large is twice the size and priced it less than the multiple, they'll see this as grabbing a great deal and you'll see the larger portions more often. Use the top right hand corner. Not enough food truck owners do this and it's a shame. Always use the top right hand corner of your menu board. Highlight your star items or your highest gross margin items on there. They'll sell a lot better and you'll make more money. Use great photos. This is also something that most food truck owners neglect and it's baffling. People like to see pictures of the food they're about to eat before ordering for it. Take great pictures and highlight them in prominent areas around your truck. If you have printed menus, have enticing pictures on it to draw more orders. Avoid small print. Have you ever read the description of a product and then noticed an asterisk next to it? Have you then scanned the rest of the page to try to figure out what the catch is? It's an annoying experience and reminds people of legalese or complex financial documents. People are ordering food from you to relax and have a good time. They don't want to be presented with complicated options that have caveats. Avoid small print literally as well. Don't make your menu too hard to scan or read from a distance. People will often scan a menu to figure out whether they want to eat there or not. Don't cram your menu with so much food that no one can figure out what's offered. Be consistent. If your menu carries out one font and tone, your truck another, and your website a third, your customer is going to be confused as to what your offerings are. You need to be consistent across all of your channels. This is why it's helpful to hire someone to manage your social media and online channels. They'll ensure the tone is consistent and that the branding is on point. Don't be a bore. Burger with cheese and lettuce, or do you prefer... Smoked burger topped with savory cheddar cheese and fresh lettuce. The choice is obvious. Even if both of these descriptions refer to the same dish, you'll likely think that the second one is a world away from the first. It's challenging to create great descriptions, 
and avoid writing overly lengthy descriptions. However, work in as many adjectives as you can. Build a picture in your customer's mind. Visualize a picture that presents your food in the tastiest manner possible. Now write down some of the adjectives that come to your mind. Incorporate these into your description without going overboard. Avoid boring descriptions that make it seem as if you've thrown something together and are charging money for it.